time to correct my mistakes. But first... Let's back to the beginnings, to November 2020. It started as usual with Hi, welcome to my lab, and idea to make Mother Gothel doll. Tanglet is one of my favorite Disney's movie and she is decent villain. She was presented in two forms, old and young, and I wanted to merge these two forms into one and make doll which is old and young at the same time. Not exactly like this. When I was looking for the references, I found that I was not only one to have this idea. I found on Pinterest this picture of which I had in my mind. When I dig a little deeper, I found that this picture was made from a clip posted on Tanglet fan page in 2018, which was promoting a book about Mother Gothel by Serena Valentino. The picture of young Mother Gothel was used as a cover of this book. Serena Valentino wrote many books about Disney villains like Maleficent, Cruella de Vil or Ursula. I didn't read these books, so I don't know whether they are good or not, but the covers are gorgeous. Kudos to illustrator! Even if my idea didn't turn out to be novel, I still wanted to do it. I didn't see doll like this and I wanted to challenge myself. For this project I used two dolls, Spectra Wondergeist for her head, because she already looks like Mother Gothel, and Draculaura for the body. I love Spectra's semi-transparent joints and for this project I will have to cover them, so I decided to change her for some regular Draculaura body. First I cut the hair of both dolls. Spectra hair was in very good shape, so I divided them into sections by color and saved them for future projects. In other hand, Draculaura's hair was sticky and neck, so I cut them and threw it away. I removed the head by warming the vinyl in hot water and removed the rest of the hair plugs with my tweezers. Gosh, Draculaura's head was made from glue. I cleaned the heads with soaping water and removed their faces with acetone. Now it is time to give her proper skin color. I mixed light bronze colors with white paint and Liquitex matte medium with water. Please tell me why I am using such small brush to mix it. It is so stupid. When paint was ready, I took makeup sponge and started to apply paint to her face and body in thin layers. Okay, that's good. But then I started to be impatient. I took big brush, yes, now you have big brush, why you didn't use it before? And I used it to cover the doll with paint. But I was more impatient and I didn't give paint time to dry, making horrible paint strokes. Ugh, and why I'm happy with this result? Girl, this looks terrible. You see these paint bulks? You see? You see? These, these ones, they are awful. When skin color dried, I painted her scalp in black and white. I mixed both colors with Liquitex Matte Medium. I recommend it for painting scalp before rerouting, because it is not chipping. Although better is not to use it on face, uh, which I did here by the way, because it is little sticky on the vinyl and it is harder to paint the face with watercolor pencil. I painted left side of her head with white and right with black. I paint attention to make it opposite to Cruella's iconic hairstyle. It is not Cruella, it is Mate Gothel. Next, I took this cream and onyx acrylic yarn, divide each strand into four and plug each one of the respective colors into her head with my rerouting tool. When her head was full of black and white hair, I loaded generous amount of Gorilla Glue to her neck hole. When it dried, I started to draw her face and oh my god! I realized how much I screw up with this doll. Pencils didn't want to stick to it, pastels were chunky, paint job looked like poop, and this face-up in general was too hard for me to make. Back then I wasn't so comfortable with paints only and... Uh, I tried to cover one side of the face with tape and paint them separately, but it didn't work. I gave up and she ended in my stock box. And this is the story. Here we are a few months later. After my recent success with Lyra, the Reverse Mermaid, I decided to return to my abandoned Mother Gothel. I started from scrapping old paint job from her body. It came super easily from her lower legs. 
I don't know, but this part of the dolls is made from totally different type of plastic and paint didn't want to stick to it even when it's sanded. I always have chips on cows. I had this with Tilia, with Victoria, with Leira and also with Amy, but uh, with her I don't bother that much because uh, she's wearing tights. When she was all clean, I took magic sculpt and I added wrinkles to her old side. I tried to add some old features to her body, especially to her hands, but I wasn't satisfied, so I removed it. Off camera I painted her skin, shaded it and sketched her new face with watercolor pencils. I know this is the most important part of this repaint and I didn't record it. I am terrible YouTuber. <coughs> to paint her face I am using acrylics only because light colors will not be seen on the painted surface with my sealant. I am adding a bit of yellow to her old eyes Clara. Eyes of elders are slightly more yellow than uh, younger people. When I was painting her, I was thinking all the time that I made her skin too grey. Oops. I'm giving her purple eyeshadow on her young half. She didn't wear any eyeshadow in the movie, but I thought that it could look nice on my doll. Purple is often used by Disney to portray villains. Look at Maleficent, Ursula or Frollo. When it dried, I moved on with watered-down acrylics for some highlights, mostly on her old side to exaggerate the wrinkles. The last thing were her irises. I was very nervous because I usually don't draw small eyes. I prefer big ones, but I wanted to give her iconic seducive look with half open eyes. And another nervous moment? Lashes. Here she is! So far so good! Next I painted her molded underwear red and this is all for the paint job. At first I wanted to write on them mother knows best quote but I didn't have that much space. Outfit time! I modified the body's part of Moonlight Jewels, Celeste dress pattern and traced it to the red velvet. Then I glued orange ribbon to the collar, which was harder than I expected and it turned out messy. After this I added sleeves and closed the bodies on the sides. I added skirt, which I abled, and sew it and close on the back.
I put it on the doll and it looked terrible. The bulk on the waist was much bigger than I expected, and dress didn't lay nice and flat. I realized that the best option is to make bodies and skirts as a one part. I didn't have pattern for it, so I had to cut this dress, the result of my hard work, into pieces and made pattern out of it. This is what I get. I traced it in the same velvet but with floral print and cut. Next, I put it on Bloody Mary, my mannequin doll, and pinned the material on the shoulders when seam should be, which first I saw with white thread as a guideline. I replaced it with a red thread later. Off camera, I closed the dress and I added velcro on the back. For the better fit, I sewed the darts on the back. I start to like it! Off camera, I prepared sleeves. Using a gold 3D fabric paint, I painted the collar and cuffs of the sleeves. Now it looks much better. To make her belt, I used orange ribbon. After a lot of struggling with it, I realized that the best will be to tie it like a tie. I burned the ends to protect it from frying and bake some marshmallows. As you may remember, Mother Gothel belt is more red than orange. To make it proper, I used red sharpie and painted red what has to be red. You can also use paint, but markers are much easier to use for me. To finish the look, I prepared the buckle from wire. Last thing, shoes. Mother Gothel has got similar shoes to those which I made for my Annie of Green Gables doll, but I wasn't today in the mood to make shoes out of the scratch. I found these Spectra shoes, which are almost perfect. I just have to replace the sole and cut these chains. Here they are! It left huge gap, which I covered with some magic sculpt. Time to try this on the feet. Ok, I see where the problem is. I didn't want to use magic sculpt when shoes were on the doll feet, because then I would glue them. But when I put them on her foot, there is this gap, you see? I need to use material which is squishy and replace with it whole sole. I cut the rest of the soles and traced shoes on craft foam. I cut them and glued to the shoes with my teeny tiny super glue. Important is to use few drops only for secure and be careful not to glue shoe to the doll's foot. When everything was in place, I took off the shoes and glued the sole better. I built the heel with mark of craft foam and chunk of her old sole. Then I pick up random 3D paint and filled with it all holes and made structure of heel. In total I did 3 layers. 
here they are. They look little chunky, but I am quite proud of them. I started with black base coat and then I try brushed them with copper and gold paint. Tada! As a last step, I shorten her hair a bit and now it's time for assemble. Here she is, my old and young mother Gothel. I'm so happy that I was able to finish my abandoned project and she turned out exactly as I wanted. I was afraid that I made her skin too grey, but it turned out to be quite fitting to her design. I guess I can cancel this clumsy point. As you can see, off camera I glued her 3D lashes and make her cloak. Not so proud of this second, but oh well. What do you think about her? Do you like Disney villains? I am more into protagonist heroes and princesses, but sometimes villains are so unique that it is hard to forget them. I started to work on second Draculaura Spectra hybrid which I had from this project, so stay tuned for her. See you soon, bye!